can anyone be healed? You don't know the form that healing show up in until they happen and until you allow yourself to recognize them. The person is trying to grapple with what is blocking my healing. The experience that is making me feel, sense, perceive and conceive discomfort. That is one aspect. Once you learn reconnective healing, you can do anything and everything in the way of healing that any human being anywhere on this planet can do. You get a glimpse of your infinite being. Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you've ever wanted to heal yourself or others, then do we have the Reconnective Healing Show for you. Today I'll be talking with Eric Pearl and Jillian Fleer of Reconnective Healing. And that's just what I want to talk with them about today, about connecting with your innate healing within and how to use it for yourself and others. That plus we'll talk about what in the world's knives, pepper spray, and Dobermans have to do with anything. So welcome to the show, Eric and Jillian. Are you both ready to shine? We're always shining, <laughs> just like you. Yeah. Woohoo! Thank goodness for just self-illumination. Yes, when the illumination of your camera goes down. How's that? Exactly. Right, that there's, too. There's always the sun, right? Excellent. So before we dive right into things, can anyone be healed? Can they? Yes. Will they recognize the healing? That depends on whether they are looking for it in some kind of a preconceived form that they only allow themselves to see if it shows up the way that they think it should, or if they allow themselves to be observation itself. So when I said the prayer before we began, for our highest good and the highest good of all, or something even better, is part of that a recognition that it is not necessarily what we feel it should be? Oh, I would agree with that so much. You know, the way I kind of digest healing as itself is there's an introspection and a reasoning, but you have to really be aware of who and what you really are in the introspection so that the reasoning doesn't sort of try to command. So I always say when you're aware of yourself as consciousness, which is healing, and when we speak today about anything that has to do with the reconnective healing experience, it would be synonymous with consciousness. So if we're talking about consciousness, what you're talking about then is if we, and you use the word reconnective, that's, that's, that's your business. If, well, we are consciousness, we are energy. I call us energy and energetic form stuffed into a human body is the best way to put it. But if we have, if we stay in the state of collective amnesia, that we are separate, we are different, we are not the one, we are not the whole, is that where the dis-ease, the disconnection is coming from? From a point of reasoning, where your mind, your ego, your personality, the person is trying to grapple with what is blocking my healing? Why am I the experience that is making me feel, sense, um, perceive and conceive discomfort? Okay, that is one aspect. But when we're able to actually glimpse behind all that thinking, feeling, seeing, perceiving, um, I, I love this, uh, this idea, even memories, um, you know, it's a, a beautiful saying, memories are really the perfume that consciousness leaves in experience. So we, we, we have at a certain point to just sort of be curious enough to say, is this all I am? It, it, is this all I am when I'm looking for my healing or something to be changed or fixed? What does that mean? Is this all I am? Are you saying, for instance, and, and, and I teach people how to become mystics, which is to live on both sides of the veil, to recognize that the table is not really all it is. In fact, it's a hologram. There isn't really a table, that there is something much more than meets the eye. But if you were to stay there in the premise, curiosity, there really isn't a table. In a way, you would be saying, I'm starting at the conclusion. 
And now I'm going to walk that out. And in essence, it's going to become more localized. It's going to become anything I perceive or conceive is now in this sort of subject object kind of conversation. So we would be where you were just now. We would say, there isn't really a table here. And so if we start at that conclusion, there isn't really a table here. The hologram is also a perception or a state of mind. Energy, light, and information, which is the reconnective healing experience, is what's resting behind all of that perceiving and conceiving. It's what is the table prior to the table being localized. It is what you and I are prior to a beautiful localization called experience. So let's talk about this for a second. You can't really be healed. You are the healing. Yet that is what becomes revealed. And as it's revealed or unveiled that we are the healing, suddenly we recognize ourselves as such and we demonstrate that because we are the healing. So, you, you know, it's like we speak of consciousness and consciousness and quantum physics was often jokingly referred to as the C word. It was the word you weren't allowed to use, consciousness. And um, because for a long time in science, they were saying, well, you know, there's the physical matter and there's the brain and we emit energy. And now we realize that energy is, but beyond energy in this infinite spectrum of energy, light and information is consciousness, is awareness and consciousness and awareness are consciousness is i am and it just focalizes to be matter to be the human being or to be the pen that you're writing with so if i was to take that and i was to take um well paul selig is one of my all-time favorite uh, channels or mediums and and the guides talk about an agreement that we all come into here in accord or in agreement we agree to war we agree to uh, a challenge a dis-ease on this planet and in a more localized sense we agree that the table is broken or my liver or kidney has an issue. But beyond the agreement is wholeness. There is nothing to be healed. It is complete. It is only when we get into this kind of twisted quagmire of an agreement that something's wrong, that something's wrong. Can we look at another word for, because I love how you're expressing this, the metaphor is so beautiful. It's a walking out metaphor. But if we were to express the agreement and call that just experience, experience known, because there is a scientific aspect to experience that really is quite verified. If you fall off of the roof, there is an experience of breaking your leg. Right. And we know the difference between what we'll call relative reality and our reality, which is experience comes and ends. Therefore, it can't be essential to us. Experience is is the tsunami that's emerged out of the ocean. And the ocean has zero investment in good, bad, beginning or ending. As far as the tsunami is concerned, it's untouched. It's unfettered it's so the tsunami ends and it dissolves it's a dissolving of the otherness so again that's the only reason i would just say we aren't really walking out it's a return to but let's look at your example for a minute with the agreement <laughs> prior to the agreement not beyond prior to the agreement is the infinite that we are the agreement condenses it to the finite or to that particular acceptance of an experience. Every experience is finite because it has a beginning and has a middle. It has an end. Even our existence as material human beings is an experience for the beginning and a middle and an end. But are we finite? No, we are infinite. So when we talk about prior to it's even before we see something. Most of us viewing everything as being finite little discrete objects. I'm here, you're there, time, distance, space, all these illusions. We want to move beyond 
But really, when we talk about moving beyond, what we're really talking about, if we allow ourselves to recognize this, is the infinite that precedes its ever present us. I'm going to call it the player with the coin at the Pac-Man or the Miss Pac-Man. We are Pac-Man or Miss Pac-Man and get confused between who is actually in the game and who is playing the game. And the one playing the game is perfect, is non-local, is beyond time, is beyond space, is beyond thought. But they put the coin in there so that there's a holographic reality and suddenly they forget that they are not Mr. or Ms. Pac-Man. So what would be the ultimate... perfection, if you will, that all experience was and had the capacity to welcome in, right? Because ultimately, self-aware becomes awareness, right? And in that awareness, anything that we are expressing in, we'll call it life experience, experience, your, your, your beautiful world, you know, journey, however you want to put it, is it already informed by what you just said? And even prior to that, the answer to your first question just before is a yes. Everything's a yes. There is only yes. We contemplate we're making choices from the perspective of reasoning. And that's how the construct of the body-mind is designed. Otherwise, how would consciousness have an experience? So let's let's go back to Pac-Man for a minute. And then I want to go, you recently did a healing on myself and baby Hana. I want to go there. But even the go, even though we know how the game will play out, even though consciousness already knows that, to me, there is an ever expansion, sort of like the known universe is always expansion, expanding. Consciousness is always expanding and growing. To me, spiraling, ascending upwards through the experiences. We would differ. I would differ on that deeply. I would say that consciousness is always the same. It is the isness and the amness of all things, and therefore it wouldn't be expanding or changing. Now, the question of is consciousness self-aware is a beautiful question, and I think it's a very important part of the conversation that's being had globally today. Because only we've, consciousness can be aware of consciousness. We, we've just returned from really being on multiple countries, multiple continents. So this question is, does consciousness understand Michael's experience and lifetime. Um, I, I I would say not at the level that that question is being asked. Absolutely not. We're going to dive in there for a second, because if consciousness is, is all-knowing, if consciousness is this field of everything, then A, why wouldn't, and there's a conundrum, spirituality is a whole bunch of paradoxes, which is great, why wouldn't A, consciousness be aware, and B, why would consciousness or an element of consciousness, the Michaelness of consciousness, choose to have an experience if the experience isn't for some reason? For instance, because that's what I'm saying is for consciousness to gain and grow and expand. Yeah. So, uh, let's, let's look at it this way. Think of the sun. The sun is self-illuminating. It doesn't require the moon in order to cast a shadow to know itself. Okay? It just is. It's self-illuminating. It's aware. And yet, obviously, the experience of each individual ray of the sun, from your kind of beautiful example, is also a holographic experience. It contains the entirety of the sun in each individual ray. So, what what I would suggest is that consciousness is, it is, again, it is unchanged. It is unchanging. Now, whether I always think of it sort of like this collective pool, this whirlpool, as the experience of consciousness experience in experiencing itself comes and goes, right? It's it finite localizes the experience Jillian or Eric or Michael or Rue hi Ru, um, moves through it. There's nothing to say that the body mind dies we know in this this game in this play, but 
There's nothing that says that that material, the substance of rue, isn't somewhere in what we'll call all consciousness. So the the quandary is, in in some ways, if every experience like rue, look at the perfection of him. I mean, he's just. You would say he's definitely a rooster out of his rooster environment, but he's fused. He's one. He's your shared being, Michael, and you're his shared being. And 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 that is so self-evident here. There is no distinction and there is a oneness that is being expressed in this experience, this beautiful conversation we're having. So the end of Michael, the end of Rue. All the things that you're informing, baby Hannah, all the things that are are informed by some knowing, some awareness as consciousness that you are already in this experience. And clearly you and Rue are together. That, to me, is our, our highest form in what we'll call our contribution or consciousness expanding. <laughs> there is no technical expansion and yet consciousness is awareness is you can really pretty much we tend to use those words fairly um interchangeably what happens is is our awareness with a lowercase a our cognizance of what capital a awareness is expands and as that expands we recognize the wholeness and the healing that we are. So consciousness, capital C, awareness, capital A, doesn't really expand our recognition of it expands kind of like the, the analogy that, you know, we, we've all heard about going out and saying, gee, the sky is gray today and yet recognizing it's not gray. There are gray clouds. Wait until they pass and you find the infinite blue of the sky is ever present. So let's switch gears from there. So we're talking about different essences. Let's go to the healing that you are doing or able to do. And thank you so much with myself and baby Hana. And what can you tell us about that experience and, and how did you do that? Well, start with how. And these are the three most important words you can string together. I don't know. No. Outside of that, we can certainly be in a recognition of things, but that recognition is re being revealed to us more and more. It's really about the presence. The key is the presence. In the healing world, there are a multitude of techniques being taught. And yet, when we recognize that everything is touching and nothing is touching, everyone is touching and no one is touching, everyone is special, therefore no one is special, we realize that there's no doing in healing. There is a beingness. In our communication right now, the appearance through a, a duality perspective is that you are on the East Coast and we are in the middle of the country. You're on a computer. You're there. I am here. We can't send it and then we want to send a healing. So there are a multitude of techniques to how to send a healing from here to there. Yet ultimately, once we recognize that we are all awareness, we recognize that we are all one, just like the waves in the ocean appear different, but there's only one ocean, just like there are 8 billion souls walking the planet, but there's one beingness. So if we are all one, if I'm one with your rooster, with you, with baby Hannah, with right. Jillian, I, can, Rue, I can't send a healing to myself unless I'm going to go to the UPS office. I mean, really, I can't send a healing to myself. So if we say to everyone watching the show right now, if you comfortably can stand up for a moment, just stand up wherever you are. You don't have to put anything down. And now take a step towards yourself. Well, you're going to start to look around a little confused. How can I take a step toward myself? Any step we take is not toward ourself because we are already that. So if you and I are one, for you to receive a healing, I have to receive a healing, which means Rue receives a healing, which means Hana receives a healing, which means the people we love, the people we like, and the people we don't like at all. Everyone is reception. This is who and what we are. So the reconnective healing experience, to answer your question really simply, is our capacity to dissolve otherness. What you're understanding. 
So look, it's it's so vividly um, available right now in a pictorial sense because you and Rue naturally do this. If if we're uh, observing or noticing in the way that reconnective healing, the reconnective healing experience sort of infuses us to uh, receive and be aware. You and there is no difference between you and Rue right now, and and. So it's a dissolving of the localization. Or the illusion of the separation. Well, I I don't want to go, you know, when we go to illusion, we go to there's no table, there's no Rue, there's no Michael, there's no Eric, there's no Jillian. And this is not solipsism. We, We really understand from the perspective of energy, light, and information that ultimately... Anything that you learn in this experience is simply at the simplest level uh, that dissolving of the perceiving and conceiving of subject and object as an experience, not as an idea, not as a concept, not as a, a a new tool. So look at the role in healing in that for, for just one, one simple thing for a moment. Wherever our attention goes, we're right there. We're smack in the middle of that whole energetic interaction. There are some people who would be afraid of Rue. They'd be pushing. Rue would be scared, pushing back. All of a sudden, all the attention would be on that. And that interaction could become negative or painful or harmful or frightening for everyone. Actually, on, on Halloween... Every child that came to the door asked if they could get a pet with Rue. (laughs) But that's beautiful. Not everyone thinks that way. So our fears focus our attention somewhere. Our fears of maybe ill health, our fears of negative energy focus on that, put our attention there and then for our intentions on there then people start trying to heal themselves through intention i'm intending this healing and that healing and this to happen and that to happen and then their intention limits what they allow themselves to recognize or see only to the limit where the cognizant mind of intention can go and their defense pushes away but yet if you have a fear of something what if you were to embrace that fear, just like Rue. What if you were to allow it into your arms, allow it into your heart? Suddenly the resistance disappears. What we are trying to protect ourselves from or defend ourselves from is not so much what's causing that discomfort, what's obscuring the happiness and the peace and the love that we are. It is the resistance itself. Release the resistance, bring it into the heart. The heart and love allows the illusions, I'll use that word, of separation and division to start to fall apart. And suddenly we step back into the wholeness, the oneness of consciousness, of beingness, of awareness that we are. And in that we are whole and healthy. Everything that's not us, the illusions, vibrates out of the picture and just falls away. So how do we functionally do that? We're saying, I'm going to go past this illusion. I am not going to intend perfect health, but I am simply going to let go of what may be in the way or what I may be causing a challenge with. How do I or how does someone listening to this take action on that? So part of it is a you transcending thinking and you come back to thinking and think much more effectively and creatively when... In a way, you just become curious about I, I, this I am or I is our truth. It's our reality. So in a way, you're accessing the dimension of the person, but in order to dissolve or in this way, soften the illusion, it's like a little unclenching of the fist. Um, you have to transcend thinking and it's an experience, right? You're having an experience again, this so glad Rue's part of our interview together because there's so many experiential, um, ways in which people will be sharing this experience of all of us together. 
And so like right now, you're having a silent realization, Michael, I'm, I'm observing you. Uh, that who or what you are, that you sense as your own presence, right? And I might refer to it as your own, but it, it's not your own. It's the presence of light of the world in you. And it's your sense of, of presence that underlines everything. So in a way, we've got this contemplation that happens when that uh, localized perception VR headsets, your glasses, softens. It's not a state of mind, though, in a reconnective healing experience. There is no state of mind. Energy, light, and information bypasses the mind. It doesn't recognize the mind. So let's make this a little earthly, just for a moment. When I practiced <laughs> as a chiropractor, um, which I practiced as for 20 years, physical adjustments are wonderful. A chiropractor takes, repositions the spine and the bones, makes an adjustment, frees things up, the body communicates better. It's really cool. And I loved it. I did it well. My patients were happy. And, and I was very thrilled. And one day, I started realizing that what if I pause one moment before I actually make that physical adjustment to recognize that there's a unification of humanity, the physical with humanity, the spiritual or the being just being all inclusive being. And for one moment, I just allow that feeling of being one with my patient. And then I made the very same adjustment. And suddenly, the healing started becoming dramatically more clear. This I started to do somewhere in my um, ninth year of practice as a chiropractor. And in that awareness, it was one day in my 12th year in practice, when all of a sudden these healings that the world now knows as reconnective healing started coming about. It's not always about holding a thought in your cognizant mind. You're allowed to be a part of the world. The doorbell can ring, the phone can happen, life is going on, and yet that awareness is a part of you. What each of these, what happens in reconnective healing is as we allow ourselves to be in reception, we feel. That feeling is another way of receiving. It's feeling, it's like going to a concert. You're receiving, you're listening, you're feeling. There's vibration, there's a resonance, and all of a sudden, it's like rust on a 200-year-old bell that was pulled up from the ocean starts to vibrate and fall away. And you start to see the bell. You get a glimpse of your infinite being. And that glimpse, one glimpse brings about a series of ongoing glimpses. And you start to bring those into your life. But you don't have to go, oh, gee, I forgot about it. Don't worry. It's who you are. The thinking mind and the thinking mind of everybody who's listening or watching and enamored by you guys, enamored by Rue, enamored by the connection between all of us and the feedback loop that's going on here may still be asking the question, the earthly question, which is coming from the mind, I understand, how? Okay. And, and, and I think that the answer to that would be B. So just be, come exactly as you are. Don't um, parcel anything out. Say yes to absolutely everything. And know that that simple be is all there is. All there is. And the nice part about the reconnective healing experience is it's kind of like it's a direct path there. So how does that happen? That we can't tell you. That it happens, we can say it happens. So but, but is that what a we can hand? what we can do okay. at some point during the interview is um, allow everyone to have a little experience yeah. of it. And the reason for the experience of it is because the experience is wordless. The experience is formless. Words are of form. Words describe something. They describe 
the sailboat behind you, the texture of the furniture or a, a ruse feathers, a, a color, a feeling. And yet the infinite of existence is without words. It is formless. So it's an experience that we have and then we bring it back into life. And the other thing, Michael, that softens is every time you think of your healing state or space, Rue doesn't have to be there. Every time you think of your healing space, you don't have to call in God, love, infinite intelligence. We start to recognize that those parts of our expression or our creativity are just that. They're part of a of a of a of a creativity that just feathers, no pun intended, Rue, the experience. But it isn't Rue. It isn't the peace and the love and the shared being that we may be experiencing during this interview together isn't in Rue or Michael or Eric or Jillian. It is the dissolving of that. Let's do this. Let's dissolve for a little bit. Let's do this experience. Do. Let's be this experience. And we will be this experience if you will, if you will, uh, uh, bless us with it, with Rue here as well. And then we can talk about that for a few minutes. How's that sound? Sounds great. So the way I might suggest we begin this is if you notice when, when your hands fall to your side, they just naturally fall open. The fingers sort of uh, have a natural spacing to them like this, a natural curve. And so what we're going to do is be receiving in this. And if we're asking ourselves, how do I begin to receive? What's receiving? Where do I receive from? Just allow it to be. When we say, how do I begin? We've already started. Okay. So let's open the fingers a little bit and allow it to pull a little bit at the skin in your palm. So you can sort of feel that little stretch and you may even feel the movement, the microcurrents of the air, especially if a window is open or a heating or air conditioning unit is on. And let that pull, let that stretch. Now watch Rue. Here yeah, we're just in a little situation via Skype, which is also another Unnoteworthy, unnoteworthy layer, but Ruth's having little what we call registers. They're micro movements that you can see. And Michael, if you even just just stay right here and observe, don't don't move your hands because you're touching Ruth. But use your eyes and just sort of scan Ruth a little bit. We're able to watch his his feathers. So actually it's because there's two of us here, you play Eric, but you can even watch the feathers on Rue. <laughs> you see? So uh, that, we, means, we, that means I'm hungry, pet me, or I'm going to need to go. <laughs> is what is he is saying. Well, let him, you, you can let him go for a minute if you want, because I, I want to play with you with this for a moment when you're ready with your own hands. Well, I'll keep my hand open while holding him, and we'll see. He may give us a minute or two here. If he starts pulling on the cord, you'll know he's saying, I'm done. <laughs> so what we do is we feel. And in this, for those um, of you who are watching and listening to this interview, if you let your fingers spread a little bit and you move one hand maybe at least six inches away or further. You float it back and forth over the other. It's almost as if you are invisibly, it's as if one hand is a canvas and the other hand is invisibly spray painting something gentle across it. You may begin to notice tiny little involuntary movements in some of your own fingers. Now imagine that there's an ethereal invisible rubber band attached to your left and right palm and pull or stretch that rubber band a little, little bit. Feel how it pulls and gets tighter and watch it. The further away you move one hand from the other, there's more intensity of sensation and greater 
movement of what goes on. Look at Rue. Even Rue's response has changed with this. It's, you know, we're used to energy. The closer you get, the stronger it becomes. But really, with the energy, light, and information, with the field of reconnective healing, the more, the further away you move, the more distance disappears. And so the love, the essence, the peace, the being that we are shows itself more and more strongly. Okay. And Michael, intensely. What, are, what are you experiencing? You have your eyes closed. You've had well, your eyes I, closed. I, I have an exercise that I do where I play with an energy ball with both hands and I pull the energy apart, which really just creates more energy and then I compress it together and then I pull it apart and compress it together. And this is a similar experience. So I will have, this is like a, a timpani. This is a drum right here and I can feel the energy and I can feel the tightness and I'm pulling that energy away, which to me is actually scooping up into more energy, being in the energy. And then I bring that energy ball back to Rue and then I bring it out and I bring it back to Rue <laughs> And I'm sure he can. he's much more energetically sensitive than I am. Uh, he sees light and prisms, and they say 12 different ways than, that the human eyes can't. Um, and he sees emotion, sees emotion. So, because his job is to protect the flock, so he can see me literally playing with energy. No. Oh. <laughs> I know, good boy. <laughs> what are you thinking? <laughs> Part of what brought this all to our awareness was the recognition of the, we'll call it the reality of this, was that there was never any expectation or anticipation of healing to come about with reconnective healing. I mean, really, in essence, I went home one night thinking I was a doctor. I came back on a Monday and something else was happening and I didn't know what it was. You know, patients were, were having involuntary movements. They were regaining vision and hearing or the ability to walk, not all of them, but a lot of them. And they started asking what was going on. And just like anyone else, I went, I really don't know. Um, research came out, started studying it and finding aspects of what they referred to as beyond the energy, light and information, which we actually know is now, you know, before, because it's, it's infinite that they hadn't witnessed before. And we found that in the sharing of this, what we thought was simply igniting the ability to heal in others was really igniting the recognition of healing in others. And therefore, as people come to seminars or training programs about reconnective healing, they discover the healers that they already are. Yeah. The true gift of healing comes about in this recognition because suddenly all technique dissolves. The need for technique dissolves and you find that you are the healing. There's no need to worry about which way your chakras are spinning or which crystals you're using here, there, otherwise, or any of the externals, the external power, the, the externals are what we give away. It's our internal, which is eternal. So it means that all of us, Rue included, maybe Rue especially, all of us are, he, he doesn't even have to wave his uh, uh, feathers, so to speak. Actually, Joe, I'm glad you said that. While we express the beginning understanding of the reconnective healing experience with our hands, we don't use our hands. So it's the, just, again, another dissolving stitch in a way. So, yes. It's an option for recognition. It allows people to begin to recognize something and then they can let that go to, there is no technique in reconnective healing. There's no techniques, there's no rituals, there's no protections, there's no, there's no near, need for that because we begin to recognize who and what we are. And once you learn reconnective healing, you know, as many wonderful people around the world that do healing that there are, there is no human anywhere on this planet. You can do anything and everything in the way of healing that any human being anywhere on this planet can do. Uh, whether they live in a mountaintop in Tibet or, you know, somewhere down in, in Brazil, it, it just makes no difference because we recognize, as we said earlier, no one is special and therefore everyone is special. Thank you. So then let's go back. It's, it, it, there's an interesting paradox. There's nothing to learn and yet there's a process to learn. We go back to me on the couch 
Um, I'm thinking of myself. I'm thinking of baby Hannah. What were you individually, because you worked on us on individual sessions, and thank you so much. What were you doing or not doing, being or not being, thinking or not thinking? What was the process or non-process going on at that time? So, so I was simply, a, when I did the facilitation, and Jillian can speak from her perspective, I simply allow myself to be in the cognizance of awareness, and then I even allow that cognizance to leave. I am receiving, I am being, uh, I'm aware of you on certain levels, and then the thinking levels beyond the mind vanish, and there's simply a presence. And in that, the healing is the recognition that we've never lost the healing in the first place, which is not easy to grasp conceptually with the mind. And yet, once you experience it, you have it. And then we go back looking for words yeah. to describe the wordless, looking for form to describe the formless. And sometimes that doesn't come about all so easily. And I want to just add one beautiful part to what you just shared. The simplicity of starting at the conclusion and never leaving there is what Eric just described. Healing is who and what we are and at the same time our recognition of our wants needs desires is part of our experience so the body mind is always a component in one's recognition or their experience of uh what's happening in their life in reconnective healing or the reconnective healing experience we're just not focused there what we notice is whatever the experience is, ultimately you come to develop a very different relationship with it. Well, you now, now you're talking about what I call being a mystic is understanding that you are not just the table. <laughs> Thank right. you. Yes, that's a beautiful recognition, right? You're not just the table. And there's a lot of different <laughs> perspectives that come about for all of us, you know, watching the program listening and mm -hmm. for me from the beginning when in 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 the year 2000 when i wrote the reconnection heal others heal yourself my focus was should it be heal yourself or heal others heal others heal yourself and now i would go oh, there is no I such thing that there's no otherness you're not even the healer or the healy you are healing yeah. itself so you know so when we wrote the direct path to healing we wrote it because it's the recognition that there is no path there's no path that you need to take this is part of the house do i do this first do i do that first do i spin my chakras clockwise or counterclockwise and I'm on a plane flying to australia when i cross over the equator do i spin it in the opposite direction than i was before there is none of that doing or fear or worrying but there is simply the awareness of being. There's a listening. And something in the, the reconnective healing experience accelerates that. That's really dramatically. It. it accelerates the dissolving more dramatically, so much so that sometimes the, the mind body doesn't even recognize it. You discover it. You, 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 yeah, just the, the dynamics in your relationship through the thinking mind sometimes has to catch up with, in a way, what's dissolved. I, I'll tell you a very quickie story. I had a, a beautiful um, participant in our community who started really to appreciate her relationship with this approach in her life. And she wanted her daughter so much to come to a little lecture that Eric and I were giving. And um, there's a, maybe a hundred people and everyone cleared the room at the end. And I saw the mother who we knew and her daughter having a brief conversation. And then the mother left and the daughter came up to me and said, hi, can I have a minute with you? And I could see she was visibly upset. She really was visibly upset. And I said, of course. And she said, you know, I'm, I'm turning 30. I'm the CEO of a fairly well-recognized corporation in the United States. I'm getting married in about four weeks. And, um, I have had clinical depression 
managed clinical depression my whole life. I am super high functioning. And that's the way she looked at me. And she was it. And I said, beautiful. And she said, you know, my mother has really come to feel something around this. And I allowed her to give me a couple of sessions. And I'm thinking, okay, what had she lose her job? Like what happened? She goes, I'm really suffering. And I said, how can I be of help? And so she said, my depression, I can't find it. It's vanished in a way where I feel like I have a hole and I, and I don't know if I'm really going to meant to marry this person. And I have a very different sense of, of peace and what is me. And I'm, she was deeply uncomfortable. So you think you'd be thrilled to release that instead when the depression left, she was left with this feeling of a giant hole. She didn't know herself. She didn't know. Well, if you are a depressed person, that is your definition of yourself. If we now remove the definition, then who am I? Right. And she was at, at that intersection. And part of what I just, long story short, the reconnective healing experience is exactly that stirring up. It And it doesn't ask permission. And the how, we can't tell you, but in this way, we can explore. And look, Ruth stayed this entire time with she us. has. And so Ru would ask, where can people go to find your beautiful book that just came out and to find out more? So well, uh, the, the book is um, only available on Amazon. <laughs> it's called The Direct Path to Healing, A Trinity of Energy, Light, and Information. It just... Um, came out day before yesterday and it's it's already trending on on the best for kindle list for for kindle I want, no, now we have and the, book. the book too yeah the, the book itself um what i want what i was going to interject in here is is that you don't know the form that healings show up in until they happen and until you allow yourself to recognize them um we've had oh, we had a woman come in because she was having she came to the seminar, but she told us later, you know, to learn the work she came. But she said, you know, she wanted to get pregnant for the longest time and she wasn't mm -hmm. able to. So she wanted to come to the seminar. She didn't want to come alone. She brought her sister with her who had lots of kids. She got pregnant. They came back later. She was pregnant. The sister came back. Not very happy. She was pregnant, <laughs> too. <laughs> You don't, but, but what happens is relationships change. Um, children who don't want anything to do with parents suddenly want all that attention and understanding from the parents. Um, people who aren't supportive of um, you and your business or your company start to become supportive. There's so many ways. It's life progress yeah, unfolds. I mean, and this is how it's purported. So to answer your question, our new book is out and we're very excited. It's been a, a, a beautiful decade in between books. And there is a, a recognition around this approach that I think we're very fired up and, and, and mm -hmm. feeling so uh, blessed to be simply being with and sharing. Right. So that's one way. The other way is we have a beautiful online course that we created in 2016 that's so accessible and we did it on Thinkific and there it's just, it's an odyssey, short segments, seven minute segments interspersed every hour includes every hour. So I love our online, it's called the portal. And then there are beautiful catalyst programs, in-person programs that actually never stopped. We're very blessed. Our European uh teaching instructor really stepped in. So there are beautiful live events that you can really come to explore all around the world. They're in, um, they're usually in the language of their country and in English, most of them, and they're on their website. We have some in, in the U S and what's so the website. Of, yeah. The reconnection.com. Yeah. The reconnection.com. Can you say that Rue? Can you say the reconnection.com? <laughs> the reconnection.com. <laughs> <laughs> How does Hannah love Rue? They have a magical connection. So um, he is the champion of if she has a need, he will be singing from the top of the highest <laughs> step he can get on to let us know baby Hannah has a need. So uh, uh, 
perhaps before we even hear her crying, he will be crowing to let us know that she is starting to cry, perhaps, or maybe even internally. It's not that he triggers it. He's letting us know that she has a need. Because they're one. So just to, to in a way, Rue's veil is much has much more elasticity as an experience that consciousness is having. Almost done, Rue. <laughs> He's trying to hang in there till the end. <laughs> oh, we're not keeping him here, are no. we? No. Okay. No. Anyway, the whole position and his whole posture is gorgeous. Bye, Rue. So any last words that you want to share or anything that you want to say to Rue? <laughs> I want to say, Rue, if you're looking for that one special healer, you need look no further than your own mirror. And actually, you really want to look not so much in that reflection from the glass as much as you want to look to see who your essence is in, around, throughout, ever presence. Um, there's a recognition of that facility to be able to heal what appears to be yourself and what appears to be others yeah. highly dramatically. And yet in that recognition, we realize that it's all of one healing. It's oneness. It's our shared being that heals this world, Michael. I, I, I think when we look at the number one part of what suffering is in its whole entirety, it is the illusion of separation. And, and I think it's a, a it's a more direct path than we realize. And I'm so encouraged on many um, levels of my my observation of 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 the true nature of who we all really are. That this is it's here. It's coming. We don't we can just unclench the fist a little bit. Say yes, much much more. Be in the recognition that um, God, love, infinite intelligence, source, whatever name you want to give it, is the very nature of who and what we are. And that's that's something we can verify if we're willing to um, do a little introspection, be a little curious, play a lot more, right? Play a lot more. Unveil ourselves. Healing is love. So healing yeah. like love is um, the experience of our one shared being, is the di disappearance of the appearance of otherness, distance, time, and space. You can't mm -hmm. technique your way into love. You can't technique your way into healing. Uh, when will I be enlightened? When I stop asking when... And when I realize the great I am. Yeah, can't become something that we already are. Oh, yes. We all got to do that. Okay, Rue, make the big rooster sound now. <laughs> <laughs> did he just do that? No, I did that looking at him and laughing because I could hear him laughing on the inside. <laughs> so great. Perfect. Yeah, you two are just so beautiful together and um all our love to baby hannah and your lovely woman and thank you thank you thank you so for everyone out there this is michael sandler and ruru the guru saying be well have fun get the direct path to healing and begin remembering who you truly are today and above and beyond all else shine bright what a beautiful healing show Rue and I just had with Eric and Jillian. On that note, if you want to check out more amazing shows, be sure to click here and check out our live events every Monday night where you'll find me, where you'll find Rue, where you'll find your homies, where you'll find your energy going up, up, up and way up. And on that note, if you want to join us and become the mystic that you were meant to be, come to InspireNationUniversity.com where you will find the School of Mystics and do come join us there. If you want to learn automatic writing, of course, AutomaticWriting.com as well where you'll communicate with spirits and roosters on the other side. Here's our link to the next amazing show. Love you guys so, so much. 
keep on shining bright. How does it get any better than this, Rue? I know you've done well with the cord on you. How does it get any better than this? Love you guys. Great job, Rue.